might make money capitalizing off of addictions. But I'll tell you some of the deepest human addictions that we have, right? Because you're, if you're taking the information that everyone's taking, you're going to get the results that everyone's getting, right? But is everyone driving in a Lambo? If you're not growing, you're dying, right? That's extremely true. If you're not growing, you are dying, right? Do we actually want what we want? Or is it just other people wanting things for us? And it, none of it matters, right? Because it's comforting that you're going to die. You're going to be forgotten. I'm going to be forgotten. You're going to be forgotten. It doesn't matter. Why am I actually doing this? Entrepreneurship is the biggest rat race of them all. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the camp podcast. My name is Scott Gleason Camp, and I'm not going to do a whole introduction about me, but I'm from Delaware, Ohio. I run e-commerce companies. They make decent money. Uh, let's get into it. But guys, I'm not going to be talking a whole lot about a business in my podcast. Maybe if I have the energy towards that in a certain day when I film it, I will. But today my energy is in something different. And it's almost weird, right? Because I'm doing all of my tasks, right? I'm doing everything I need for the day, right? So I'm I'm filming my YouTube videos. I'm checking with my employees. I'm, you know, researching products. I'm doing just business things. I'm working out. I'm, you know, eating. I'm uh, you know, boxing, I'm, I'm doing things like that. I'm just doing it all, right? Consuming, le- learning, you know, l- listening to podcasts, right? And I got to thinking, what, like, not, like, I thought, what is this all for, right? And it wasn't like the idea of, is this all worth it type of what is this all for? It's why am I actually doing this, Right? Because I made a video a couple days ago saying why money actually doesn't matter, right? It does matter, but it's not, it shouldn't be your self-worth, right? And that's what kind of mine was. My self-worth was based off of money and it's, it's wrong and I'm kind of changing that right now. But I thought, why is this all actually a thing? Why do we actually do all this? Why do we actually want to, you know, succeed in business? Why do we want to get a good job? Why do we want to stay in shape? Why do we want to have a six pack, big arms, uh, strong legs? Why do we want to have the beautiful women around us? Why do we want status? Why do we want a lot of followers? I thought about this to a biological level. Okay. I thought about this genuinely because I didn't know. I was like, what, what the hell is this all for? Right? Because at the end of the day, right? You can't take your money with you. You leave it to your offspring but you can't take it with you, right? You can't take your name with you. People in 100 years, no matter how famous you are, you're going to be forgotten. I don't care if you're the fucking Michael Jordan, if you're the fucking Alex Hormozy, if you're, I don't care who you are, bro. You're going to be forgotten. I'm going to be forgotten. You're going to be forgotten. It doesn't matter, right? So you can't take that with you either, right? But why do we focus all on it so much while we're here? And I, it came, it comes down to two things, right? Humans are put on this earth to do two things, right? To fucking not want to die to survive and to reproduce right so why do we do all of this right so say you want to make a lot of money you want to go get a good job or you want to start a business to maybe make you know millions or hundreds of thousands or billions whatever you want to do right whatever you have envisioned for yourself right but why do you actually want the money because the money doesn't equivalate to one of those two necessarily, right? It doesn't equate to I'm not going to die and it doesn't equate to I can reproduce, right? Directly, right? But if you think about it, why do we want to make more money, right? Because way back in in the olden days, right? <laughs> Thousands of years ago, right? The, the man who could go hunt for, you know, their family, the man who could go hunt and be re- resourceful and have resources, it could provide for a family, right? And what does a female look for, right? They want a man who can provide resources to eventually raise young, healthy, strong offspring, right? So I think that's partially why people want to make money, right? Because it comes from a more primal sense, right? Because it comes from a sense of I need to do this so I can find a mate, which is true and not true, right? Because you technically don't need that. But you need enough of it, right? No money is terrible. But too much of money, it doesn't help any, right? It doesn't help that marginally. It doesn't help that much, right? But once you get to a certain point, right, it's just, you know, it's the same, right? And 
Like I'm not going to talk like I know what I'm talking about because I don't have millions and millions of dollars in the bank yet. But I will. But I'm going to be waiting till that day and be like, and eventually I'll be like, is this, you know, what what's my priority now? Because I finished this, right? Now there's a bigger mountain to climb, right? And like, that's the same reason status exists. Stay is in like actually wanting to see, you know, like, like famous people, right? Like, why do people look up to famous people? Like the people with a bunch of numbers on the screen, right? It's because it shows you're a leader, right? So like maybe the highest respected man, or I'm just talking in men's sake because I'm a man and I can understand this, but the highest respected man, maybe back in, you know, primal days, maybe got all the ladies because it was just a deep primal feeling they got when they could look at a man and other men respected them right so that's also it has a deeper meaning right we also want status for money right but money what is the what does it equivalent to right you know reproducing right so it all comes back to reproducing and reproducing and that's that's one of it right but it also leads to, you know, not dying, right? That's the second priority we have. We don't want to die. We want to live, right? And we don't want to actually just live. We want to thrive, right? So, like, how do you actually live nowadays, right? You need a, sh- you need a shelter over your house or your, your hut. You need food. You need, you know, to have clothes on your back. That's what it takes to survive. It's pretty damn simple. But... That's at the end of the day, we want money, right? And we want status and anything like that. We want all of this because it equates to, or we think it does, but it doesn't as much as you think. It equates to reproducing and it equates to not dying, right? Even though you could have all the money in the world and go die in a car crash tomorrow morning, right? It doesn't keep you safe, right? Even though you could have all the money in the world and you're a dickhead and no one likes you and you're weird and you're lonely and all that shit and no one wants to have kids with you, right? Things like that. It, it, it helps, but it doesn't and it doesn't directly do it. But it makes you think, is this all worth it? Because at the end of the day, none of it matters, right? Because we're all going to die, right? But it, it's I think of it more as I think it's cool. That it, none of it matters, right? Because it's comforting that you're going to die, in a way. Not like from a de- depressive episode or standpoint I'm having. It's just, it's comforting that you don't have to focus on forever, right? And we, as humans, we are focusing on forever, even though it's not really required to, right? Because we're focusing on the generation's past, even though we have no control over it, right? So I find comfort in thinking, wow, this is... <laughs> This is a cool world we live in, right? Because we can literally do anything we want, right? We can express ourselves how we want. We can do whatever we want for work and make money. We can pick any female we want and have uh, children with her. And we can do anything like that and have a life, right? But all of this, this stuff in between, right? Making money, the driving the sports car, maybe getting the penthouse, all that is just a side quest, bro. It's all just keeping you busy until you die, right? So then I I realize this and I'm tending to enjoy life more, right? Because I understand none of this actually matters. It's just, you know, this is all just a quest and let's make it the best we can. But bro, it's, 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 it's just to keep you busy, right? So build cool shit, build shit the way you want to be built, right? In this kind of comes up something different I was thinking about. Do we actually desire what we desire? Right? Do we actually want what we want? Or is it just other people wanting things for us? Right? So you see the guy on Instagram. He has a Lambo. He has the penthouse. He has the 14 girls in his bed. Whatever. Do we actually want that? Or is that just our desires, you know, packaged in, like, pretty packaging as someone else's? Right? What are your desires? I... in I was thinking about this deeper. Is it truly possible to have all of your own desires only completely only your desires? No, it's not. Right? Because your your environment influences it. 
completely. And you can't just shut out your whole environment because even if you do shut out all the social media, shut out the TV, people completely, you're still going to have things that you want for reasons caused by your environment. You might be fucking freezing. You might be cold. So oh, I, I want a hot tub. I want a blanket or something like that. Right? It's completely uh, caused by your environment. Right? So it gets me to think, okay, so maybe I should try to focus more on what I want out of life, right? Not maybe, not maybe just what's popular. What do I genuinely want out of life? And I have to understand that, yeah, I'm going to want things and it's all influenced by other people, but do I actually, from the bottom of my heart, want that, right? So do I genuinely actually, um, you know, I'm into cars, right? I'm not a big car, you know, gearhead. I don't know about, I don't know all the engine shits. I don't, I don't know the super detailed things of it. But I, I like cars. I know car brands. I like. I know car models, makes, things like that. But I really, really want my dream car. And this might be dr dreaming small because these aren't that expensive in the grand scheme of things. I want a Corvette, right? And I'm not talking an old Corvette. I want a new Corvette. The new Corvettes look sick. They got a little bit of an, an Italian hint in them. Looks very, very uh, beautiful and it has, you know, American power. Uh, so I want one of those, and I think I can probably get one in the next one or two years for sure. Probably next one year, I'm thinking, uh, just by the th way things are going. But, uh, you know, it's not – like I, I think why I want that, and I'm like, okay, well, yeah, it's probably coming down from, you know, status, and it's probably coming down from, you know, will this get me more girls, and will this – you know, come down to like, actually, did I see someone like enjoying this that I would probably want to enjoy this too, right? Yeah, absolutely. But can you control that? No, but you can control thinking, is this actually what I want after I think about it, right? Because every desire you have is someone else's to begin with, right? So I just have to kind of think about everything that comes into my head that I want. I have to think, Okay, do I actually want this? Do I actually, actually, from the bottom of my heart, want this? Do I want a Corvette, you know, because I like, you know, the color. I like how the body style looks. I like how, you know, how fast it goes, you know, the sounds it makes. Do I like it because of that? And I can, like, really, really have fun with it as a person and just drive it around and have a great time? Or do I want it because I'm doing it for external reasons, for external validations from females or males or, you know, for Instagram likes or things like that? And I boil it down deeper. I want the Corvette because it sounds cool. They look cool. And I like it. So, and I think I would have fun driving it. Because I, I have fun time driving right now. And I don't drive a cool car, guys. I don't drive a, I drive probably the slowest car known to man. I drive, I drive a 2023 Honda Civic Sport, but they're slow as fuck, bro. They're so slow, bro. I think my brother was telling me he did more research. He said they are the slowest car made of its year and any fucking make, any make, any brand, right? And it's weird because it's a sport, even though it's just a complete scam, whatever. But how much, how much more would I like driving if I had a, you know, a four or 500 horsepower car that sounded like a race car? that is like just looks cooler right so that's uh that's kind of what i want um and I'm, I'm aware that it's pretty uh hedonistic to like you know want things like that but it's also not right because it just keeps you busy right and it's just part of life right and it's down to a more primal state right so it's what do I think I can actually gain from this besides my enjoyment, right? Can I, do, you, do I think I can have better reactions from females? Can I uh, eventually use that to reproduce? Things like that. Um, but I'm also aware that once I get that, I'm probably going to want the bigger thing, right? I might want a Ferrari. I might want a Lambo. I might want a Rolls Royce, right? But once I get a Rolls Royce or once I get a Lambo, am I going to want something better? Am I going to want to a boat am I gonna want a jet right but once I get a boat am I gonna you know am I gonna want the jet if I get a jet am I gonna want like is it just a never-ending cycle I think yes I think it is but at the end of the day if you can realize it is and still enjoy it 
I don't see a problem with it at all, honestly, because <laughs> because if you don't like have a partial thinking like that, if you don't have a partial thinking that there's always a bigger mountain to climb, then you won't grow, right? And, you know, if you're not growing, you're dying, right? That's extremely true. If you're not growing, you are dying. So you must keep growing and moving forward, but you also can't let it become a rat race, right? Because I realized entrepreneurship is the biggest rat race of them all. Completely, completely. And, you know, these guys like Andrew Tate, I have nothing against him. I actually like a lot what if he, or what of what he says, but I disagree with like escape the matrix, escape the rat race, bro. You are so far into the matrix. If you are trying to escape the matrix, bro, like, like genuinely, <laughs> like if you think becoming an entrepreneur or making your own money is escaping the matrix, bro, you're not moving out of the matrix, bro. You're moving into another sector of the matrix, right? And I'm going to admit I'm in the matrix. Everyone's in the fucking matrix. You can't truly escape the matrix. Everybody's in a sector, bro, right? So it makes you just think, right? And it's all just a rat race. It's just a different rat race, right? So you know, the nine to five, you might be, it might be a rat race because, you know, you're working for someone else. You don't feel true fulfillment. All right. But you go become an entrepreneur and you, it's another rat race because you're always comparing yourself to the other guy, right? You're always comparing to yourself to the guy who runs a different business, um, how much he makes. You're, you know, you're comparing to the guy who makes, you know, a million more than you or has a different sports car or has a beautiful or girl, right? So, you're oh it's just a rat race to a rat race right so no matter what you do you're in the matrix bro and the way you can only true escape truly escape the matrix and you're really not at the same time is just realizing it's all a matrix and realizing it's all fake it's all just side quests completely right because once it's boiled down there's only two reasons we want all of this stuff and it's to survive and it's to mate Right. But once you can realize that and just enjoy it all and just find true enjoyment and do whatever the fuck you want to achieve those, then you then you truly escaped the matrix. Because another way of actually, you know, tricking people, you know, Andrew Tate created his own sector of the matrix, bro. Eamon Gadji, he created his own sector of the matrix. I'm creating my own sector of the fucking matrix by doing this. Right. He's just tricking you into joining his side of the matrix. Right, because his side of the matrix has you paying him, in him making money, but you also might make money with it, right? So you're just another part of the matrix because you're still chasing something, right? So it's it's crazy to think about how this is all a part of the matrix, and once you realize that the matrix doesn't fucking matter, <laughs> it's all just fucking bullshit to make you feel fucking scared and give like have other people give you, or have you like have you give them money, it's just all a, a fear tactic they use, then it doesn't fucking matter anymore, all right? But guys, I want to be clear. If you stayed this long, you're a G, right? Because a lot of people probably already tapped out because this shit is too fucking far, like, ahead of them, right? Because I'm growing extremely fast in my brain, I think. Um, You know, obviously, there's people out there, like, way fucking ahead of me, but for the average Joe, I think I'm quite advanced in my brain, not from like, a, I'm smarter than you. It's just I, I'm i understanding the world differently than you, and it might benefit me uh, faster, right? So I you have to think, right? Where are you getting your information, right? Are you getting your information from shit like this, right? Like actually good information, or are you getting your information from Eamon Gadji, who has, you know, three or four million other people just like you watching him? Right? Because you're, if you're taking the information that everyone's taking, you're going to get the results that everyone's get, uh, getting. Right, But is everyone driving in a Lambo? Is everybody, you know, riding in a private jet? Is everybody, you know, having all the beautiful women? No, there's only a very few minority of the people who are doing that. There's only a few people with a Lambo. There's only a few people with the, the PJ, the, with the penthouse, with the beautiful women. Right? So you have to think, where am I getting my information? What am I actually doing? Is my if is what I'm actually doing different than everyone else? Because once you can actually think for yourself, actually unlock your thinking, take thirty to forty five minutes at least a day to only think and just retrain your brain if and think for the future and today, 
is what I'm doing going to help me today and tomorrow? And how is it actually going to affect me? Things like that. Once you actually just think for yourself and turn off all the media, then you will actually be able to understand how to make money. You'll be actually understanding or understanding what's needed in the marketplace. You'll understand that this shit's all a fucking rat race and you can do whatever the fuck you want to make it. <laughs> Seriously, bro. If you were if you understand, you know, what people want, you can fucking make infinite amount of money. Infinite amount of money. And I'm gonna share a little sauce with you guys. The ways that I've made money, I'm not going to tell you. I make money in e-commerce and I say that. But I make money and this is going to sound bad. And it's not bad because I get tricked into it. You get tricked into it. Everyone gets tricked into it. I make money capitalizing off of addictions. I do. But everyone does. Everyone makes money off of addictions, right? So if even if you own a marketing company, you are feeding addictions, right? Because people want more money. Money's an addiction. You're feeding people more money. It's an addiction, right? But I... Um, in, you know, just catering to different addictions. And no, I don't make any money off of YouTube. I'm not catering the dopamine addiction. I cater to different addictions that I'm not going to tell you. No, I'm not getting people to smoke cigarettes, anything bad, right? It's actually probably one of the best addictions you can have, right? But you have to think, what are actually the, like, the addictions that people have? And once you learn those, and you can make infinite amounts of money. And guys, it's not bad. Not every addiction has to be bad, right? You can have wonderful, wonderful addictions, Addictions to, you know, wanting better partner, wanting more love, right? Better kids, you know, you, you can have great addictions out there, right? But I'll tell you some of the deepest human addictions that we have, right? We have the need for love and intimacy. That's one. We need uh, to survive, right? So that's an addiction, like just survival. But that's not really an addiction. Let me, I, I'm going to, I actually scratch the uh, survival part. So love and intimacy, Right? Status. Status is an, is an addiction as well. Money is an addiction. Right? If you make, more, make people more money, they'll pay you. Right? Um, you know, validation is an addiction. Right? But that kind of goes with intimacy. Right? But this, oh, they, there's really, really only like two, uh, two sectors to business, guys. And, and if you break the, down the addictions, you still go down to the two basic levels of life. Staying alive reproducing right because if you can you know feed the addiction of how can i help people be like better you know partners how can i get people to you know be more confident so they can go attract a better partner or uh, get more girls or you know how can i make people more money so they maybe get a new sports car and then attract the girls you're all going down to the level of intimacy right of how do i reproduce right or say you sell fucking groceries you you're a farmer you fucking do whatever you're just you're you're basically helping people survive you build houses you put clothes on people's back right you're just catering to a different level of the game there's two levels of the game reprodu or reproduction and actually you know fucking not dying right survival so once you can figure out and think you can actually think about the the deep human thoughts that of people actually want and actually need, and you can cater to those, and you can make a lot of money doing it, right? But people are too deep in these, like, little hacks, bro, and I was too. But I'm thinking now, what do people actually need to survive, and what do people actually want to survive, right? Because, like, you might get, like, sold on the newest fucking update of fucking business, and that's dropshipping the best method. Well, bro, do people want dropshipping? No. People want great products that solve a problem in their life, right? People want to solve the two basic needs, right? Do they, they, they want to reproduce and they want to survive, right? So if you can meet the survival needs, sell clothes, sell um, fucking, you know, what infrastructure to survive, or if you can survive or sell, you know, things to reproduce, right? And it doesn't have to be like direct fucking like reproduction things like condoms or whatever it, it can be like literally like i can make this more people or this person more status or i can give this person more status with the clothes they wear or the hat they have or the car they drive or the phone case they have or the type of phone or um i can make this per person more money so they have more status so they can re reproduce or i can actually just teach people how to actually go talk to girls i can sell a course on how to actually you know get better in bed like bro 
you just think about it differently. What are people's true desires? What do people actually need to survive? You'll make infinite amount of money. Truly. And, bro, it's it sounds so bad, bro. But this is such a fucking deep topic that if you stayed to, this is probably the most valuable shit I've actually ever said on this channel. And I didn't come to fruition with this until recently. Right? But that's when my whole perspective of things changed. Right? Because I was stuck in the rat race too. Technically, I'm still in it. But... I think about it differently now. I know I know how to win with the highest leverage. I know how to win with, um, you know, without sacrificing my whole fucking mental state, right? I know how to win without attaching my self worth to the money, to the cars, to the whatever, the women, right? I know how that I'm worth more. I'm worth a fucking. I'm I'm human, bro. I'm a I'm a man, right? And I'm worth all of this, but I'm not. That's not. That's not what makes me a man. What makes me a man is what's between my legs, bro. Right? Everyone's born the same. Right? But that's all just different fucking side quests of life. Right? If you figure out what you're truly believing in and you know your your true values, that's what you are as a man. And you stick true to that, you're a good man. Right? So, just, this was quite deep, guys. And I might cut this off soon. I might cut this actually right now because I don't want it to go to be just bullshit. Think about where you're getting your information. Think about what true people truly want in life. That will help you in every sector of life, in love, in business, in anything, bro. People will pay you. People will want to be with you, friends with you, mate with you. If you can just understand the simple desires of life, right? If you think about what a woman wants, she wants validation. She wants um, truly, you have to just understand the woman, right? You have to understand the person. Understand people. Just look at people and observe better, bro. Um, that observation and thinking is one of the most important things that I'm actually seeing right now, right? Because people can't think anymore for themselves, right? You have to think and observe your audience of what people actually want, of you know, actually what people need, right? If you if you're going to look a, to get a girlfriend or maybe just sleep with a girl, you have to look at her deepest insecurities and deepest thoughts and what she actually wants and thinks, right? You can't just generalize, right? Because if you generalize it, you're not going to get anywhere. But if you can look directly into the girl and be like, oh, and understand her life, right? Maybe, you know, she had insecurities growing up with her family or whatever. You can actually understand those and cater to those. She's going to like you, bro. You just have to under things, understand things on a deeper level, which just comes to actually leveling up as a person and being able to think outside the box. And this all comes to where you get your information, right? So I make it a purposeful intention not to listen to one person. I listen to probably hundreds of different people but i t extract little things from each person right because i could not i what i used to do i only used to listen to like one or two people right i would only listen to andrew tate i would only listen to even gadji i would only listen to other people right but now that i only listen to the majority of myself and i hear uh, hundreds of different information sources i can think more clearly for myself and i can think what's actually good for me what's actually good for other people Right, so just think, guys. Think, think, think. That's the end of the podcast. I'll see you guys later. Make sure to go check out the free e-commerce guide that I made, free e-commerce book that I also wrote on how we are generating over $12,000 a week with one product and we're launching others. Guys, I will see you in the next one. Peace.